And they had like the guy that what is it? Uh, Todd said they had twelve. The, the, like I said we had twelve cameras there because we were taping everything was being done because we wanted to see the run through. So which say we extras for your DVD, folks. You know you uh, actually it. it's one of the ones. It's like I'd really like to see the DVD inserts because you. Gonna we know what's them. coming because yeah. they did say they got this big six foot three hundred pound. And it was much heavier when the movie started than when it ended. You know. You know. And actually, the, the scene that I want to see is when you were talking about how they were going to go approach Amy Adams. Yeah. Okay. So they Jason helped put this together, right, with the studio. Yeah. <laughs> with Kermit. <laughs> Kermit. Well, they did. They were afraid that Amy Adams was going to turn him down, but you couldn't so, turn. You couldn't turn Kermit down. So Jason Siegel and Kermit went to go talk to Amy Adams, and Jason said, "I never felt a more desperate pan <laughs> pantry." <laughs> we went to go ask Amy to be in the movie. But then he also followed up. He said, "My, he, he just all that, like it said, a pit. Oh God, what if she had turned this turn Muppet? If she had turned Kermit down, they had no follow up." But what happened was, was they said they penciled all of these people in that they wanted. They penciled them into the script, and those were the only ones they asked. And, and it never dawned on a whole bunch. It's like, what would happen? I know they were already in the script. Now, one of the ones, um, who was the surprise? Chris Cooper. Oh yeah. Oh, Chris Cooper does a song and dance routine, folks. A rap. A rap. But you never. Yeah. It's like it's from like, where did that come from? Yeah, you know, it's like he said that. Uh, uh, Jason said that he understands why the Cooper got an Academy Award and many nominations, and Amy has a, had many nominations because they really take it seriously. They, you know, because they said Cooper went and studied. You know, he said that some of those guys are really they're great actors, and he's basically. And they said, you know, like my God, Chris Cooper's on top of table dancing, and he can dance. He, you know, he can rap. He can dance. You know, which is a basically Chris Cooper never does anything funny. I mean, I don't. I mean, okay, it's just like. Um, I mean, I mean, I've met. Um, there was a the guy that played James Bond. No, Timothy Dalton. I met Timothy Dalton. He's the most god awful, boring person on the screen in the world, on on movies and TV. In person, the guy is basically Leslie Nielsen. He never stops being body. And that, uh, my guess is Chris Cooper off camera. The, the, the rapping, dancing Cooper is really Chris Cooper. And he just, I get to it dance. Was, it was really just kind of funny because it was something that you would never expect. And oh, I no. still remember on this, I'm watching it on the screen. Oh, we did get to see the ever growing, you know, sure. uh, uh, ever growing leading lady in the movie, though. She was she was a little bit expecting what the movie was on. Uh, but, you know, Amy Adams is great in this movie. Oh, she's like, singing and she's dancing. Just, uh, you know, I, I can see why they wanted Amy because she's like for real. Ones. They did actually, in one scene, did torture him because Jack Black is a professional singer. He may play, you know, with, uh, with Tanaya to see, you know, <laughs> okay, and, but okay. he is a okay. singer. Yeah, okay. Well, actually, we can let them in on this one. Yeah. His torture, okay, yeah. was he was tied up and had to listen to the barbershop. Quartet, but butchering a piece of music. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can listen, listen to what he says on the screen. This is not what we're supposed to be. I mean, they had him tied to the chair and he could not move, and they're they're tortured him with really bad. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, but they did. Okay, you know, so we enjoyed the movie. Yeah, <laughs> no, but they did say that you know he started. Uh, Jason she goes, started out as a writer for Jack Black to give him his first job. So he was the oh. easiest one to get because he already knew that he liked the Muppets and stuff. But it um, was it was just funny. But I don't think Black knew he was going to actually be tied to a thing and not let up. <laughs> not I mean, the whole time. I mean they just tied no. He did no during talking during the entire end of the movie, he is tied to a chair and then hauled around like a piece of furniture, folks. And you know, and and then, you know, like He's sitting there like a good sport and having everything done to him. I don't know how, how. I think some of that help was probably for real. So. It, was pretty, because, okay, it was pretty funny. People forget the Muppets aren't real. They yeah, totally, but, you, but when you sit there and watch them on there, you just think of them not as a Muppet, you think of them as a man. Yeah, as, as a, a person. Man. Muppet or man, man or Muppet. That's, that was basically, people do not think of the Muppets as. Puppets. Puppets, and that's are because that's another thing. Um, uh, Jason is listed as a puppeteer, which means he's played, he plays with puppets too. So, 
you know. But um, you know, it's it, it is absolutely a good family movie for everybody to go see. I mean. Uh, it's, it is. It's okay. Just... The kids won't mind. Okay, a lot of the, the Zoom. Okay, the Muppets have always done adult humor, but the adult humor has never been set, put in such a matter that the kids won't think it's funny, because they may not. You know. Oh yeah, I can understand that. You know. You know, like Mount Rushmore. You know, taking a head off of Mount Rushmore and putting a Muppet's head on. <laughs> you know. Well, it's it's humor that kids understand. Like you said, kids understand. Because some adult humor is the kids don't understand it at all. Yeah. Right. But this is for kids and adult, for families. I mean, the Muppets have been a part of the Disney people, Disney company for. They've been not a part of it, a part of it, not a part of it, a part of it. But if you listen to really what Walt Disney said, I wanted to do something for children of all ages. The and Muppets are for children. Look at the room. I mean, there are people, uh, like there were little there were kids kid next to you, you, and they were from kids' age up to people my age in the room. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Sort of like, um, you know, like you go to a Beach Boys concert, you'll see people, kids up to grand, great grandparents. But it was a movie, you know, like I said, it, you can tell. I mean, um, I, I, I grew up working on independent pictures because most of the stuff I worked with, you couldn't call it anything else but that. But they actually moved. I mean, like you got 55 minutes on a on a. They had a pace. You got to get it going. You got to go from here to there, or or a half hour independent thing. You got you actually got 30 minutes to do a, an hour and a half movie in 30 minutes. So you have to have you got to go, but you can't go. Mm. And then half hour later go. Mm. The most independents are slow. Uh, this is, I mean, this is the thing is, is that, okay, uh, if you put Robert Rodriguez, who was a, he was an independent producer and always mainstream like for Disney and other people could in Tarantino's, that his, his independent movies always had a flow and a beat to them. They always moved, you know, like this. But most of the movies we have seen that the crit critics love everything. I mean, we have not been to a movie in two months that critics did not go gaga over. I mean, they've all been winners in one place or another. I mean, The Muppets basically is just out, so it hasn't had a chance, but it's going to get uh, at least two nominations, I know of, one for Best Song and Best yeah. Score. So, it was fun. It was a Muppet of a movie. It was a Muppet. So, I mean, so we, 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 we try to wrap things up with uh, simple, you know, like, okay, would, would we pay to go see the movie? You know? That, matinee? Matinee, yeah. <laughs> matinee, and not evening. I get some well, decision prices, so... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I say matinee because, okay, if, if I had a family... Oh, God. You probably, you, yeah. Actually, you go to matinee because it's cheaper, right? Because yeah. you're bringing everybody. But if I had, if I wasn't, okay, if I had children, which I actually once did have, you know, I, I would I would take them to see the movie is it because a, it's is, something that they could have fun at. They'd giggle. Is it a date movie? Yeah, if you want to make them laugh. Yeah, if it's so. Oh, if somebody else would pay the movie, would I go to see it? Oh, actually, there's another one. If somebody else would pay for the movie, would you go see it? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we do know we would definitely watch it if it came on television. And I'd buy the DVD. And the DVD. The DVD's got to be that. DVD. In fact, I'm looking forward to the DVD. <laughs> Which is funny. Oh, I don't even have to buy the DVD. You know why? Why? I'm with, I'm with Disney. I'm with the Disney Entertainment, which means I can get us a screener. Yeah, but the screener's not going to have all those outtakes. It's a screener. It's got the outtakes. I can it get, does. Uh, okay. I'll let you in a secret. I can get a thing now with uh, Jack Black and um, and Steve Martin, a screener with all of the. I can get us a have him send us the DVD out. <laughs> With okay. all the outtakes in See, it. so when we say, would we go to, I guess we're probably pickier than most people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, uh, we choose, we, we cut, here it is, because we have X amount of money to go see movies, and, and we have to pay to go see them. They don't let us, other than the screeners, we can't we pay like everybody else. And see, the screeners we can get by with, because when you're right on a thing, you know, they still have to say, you know, were you paid to do this or such and such? No, we have to mark that all the time because mm -hmm. that's, they're getting nitpicky now. But if, if we're paying our own money to go in, then we don't even worry about the nitpicky because we're paying our own money. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, you know, generally, I mean, there's some movies I've really liked, but I got off on never would pay to go see them. I wouldn't watch them on television. I mean, um, okay. Well, good. For example, some movies, 
are meant to be seen on a big screen. Yeah, on a small screen. It, 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 it loses yeah. some of its effect. If you've got a big screen at home, it's great. But there, there are some, like, if it's worth it to go watch it on a big screen. Now, there's always the, the movies that you fill in with. You know, I want to go out, I want to see something different, and you go. Yeah. But there's movies, for me, when you go pay to see it on a big screen, I like to see movies that are intended to be on a big screen. Yeah. That you cannot get the same but experience nowhere near at home. Most independent films are not meant to be on a big screen. I can, I can tell by the photography. The, if the photography looks washed out, it's more than likely because the, it is blown up beyond its capability of being seen mm -hmm. on the screen in the room. But um, this movie, um, you know, was meant to be seen big because they're not going to be able. Uh, you can maybe with a high def, but I, mean, I guess you're going to have to letterbox it for the simple reason there's too much stuff going around. Too much on the right and left and the top. Here's the problem. It's not only right and left, it's top and bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a, a widescreen television set and in, 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 uh, really high def will get it in. But you have to watch the corners of the movie, folks. Yeah. Because there's all kinds of stuff going on in, in the background. There's, there's actually a whole lot to see in that entire scene. Yeah, so it, it is something, it's a movie you got to go see a few times to catch all the stuff that's actually going on in them. In the French, they call it maison scene, which means everything within the scene. They're playing Barnum and Bailey in the scenes. Well, and this is one of those ones, I don't know about you, it's like you're working on stuff and you want a movie in the background, is a lot of times it's like I have some of the lighter, more fun movies in the background that you can pay attention to periodically versus some that are real dramatic that you have to sit there and watch. Oh, but the trick is there's catchy music in this <laughs> one. So you're, but the problem is the music because you said... Well, the, I'm sure that'll do the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, the soundtrack, you know, is out there. But, yeah. um, but the music will sit there, you know, if instead of doing what you're doing, you, want, you end up watching a movie. Mm -hmm. It's like... Um, watching White Christmas, every time the musical numbers come up, you stop doing what you're doing. You've seen a bloody movie a zillion times. But, it, 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 like I said, this is the unique thing. I've really never seen independent musicals made. Never seen independent musicals made because they don't have a budget for it. But um, it is nice to see a big budget movie. Mm -hmm. Really, with people. I mean, I don't take it anything away from the little guys making the independent. But the trick mm -hmm. is, folks, you gotta make money. You want to make that second movie, you better make money on your first movie. Well, one of the things is when we look at the movies, you look at it from uh, how they're made. They're creating it standpoint, more of a technical standpoint. Or I kind of look at it more of the pure enjoyment. Yeah, no, we, we saw. <laughs> we saw really. You know, because we're, you know, it's we're, fun. We're, we're, we're digressing, but we did see a movie. She really hates subtitles on foreign movies. So we did, but you have to go see foreign movies every now and then. We, you know, so we did go see one that was a, at that moment it was the flavor of the month. And we did pay to go see it too, so. Mm -hmm. But it was winning all the festival stuff and then they didn't even get on the, the long list. So but, uh, Well, if it's a good movie, you forget that there are subtitles. Yeah. You know, and uh, so, but um, it was actually it was a good movie. It was made, it was meant oh. for three D, not for two D, like we saw it. We knew it was meant for three D. We could tell by the way it looked on the screen. And for some god unknown mm -hmm. reason, they showed it. We actually got a two D print of a three D movie. But mm -hmm. um, no, but the Muppets was a lot of fun. And I can, the way I look at it is, I look at it as a version of the Polar Express that actually come close to breaking even, unlike the Polar Express, which means. You'll see. Didn't that it break even? Oh, I guess eventually. Eventually, it broke yeah. even. It cost. Mm -hmm. They made it three times, I think. But the Muppet movie is close to its figure. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're spending like 150 million dollars to reintroduce the Muppets because they want to do new Muppet. Yeah, new Muppet new, movies. New Muppet there's movie, a lot of new specials. There's a lot of uh, merchandising that goes along with it. See, I don't think that. Um, I, I don't think. It's a rebooting of the franchise. Yeah, but, I don't think that the Muppet movie, Muppet series was killed because of a uh, lack of interest. I think it was killed because it's really got awful hard to do. The TV series couldn't be done anymore because, I mean, oh, look at the staff want, you're having to Oh, hire. you know what? They wanted lower production costs. Mm -hmm. and, probably. And, uh, yeah. and lower production costs.